this is Mickey. Today I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking about the differences in vibrance and saturation in color control and workflow in Lightroom. And we had been talking about this uh, in the past few videos, and I was also talking with some friends about it. What do you use first? Do you use saturation or vibrance? Because it's the core of controlling color. And this friend of mine says, well, it's, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's either or. I, I just grab whichever I feel is the best, and I start tweaking it till I get the color I want. And I was thinking, mm, that's not really the case. I mean, there's a big difference between vibrance and saturation. And it kind of reminded me of that scene in Mr. Mom where Michael Keaton is trying to tell his wife's boss how he's going to rewire the house without really understanding what entailed. Here, I'm going to rip these walls out and, uh, of course, rewire it. Yeah, you're going to make it all 220? Yeah, 220, 221, whatever it takes. Knowing the difference between your two tools is important, and really, it's a little tricky at first, and it's a big deal to understand it. It's a big deal because color in general is a big deal in photography. Color is an excellent tool for conveying meaning, emotion, vision, and even the absence of color has its uses as well. It's worth a deeper understanding about just what's going on under the hood of Lightroom and finding out what the difference is between vibrance and saturation. To some, it might appear vibrance and saturation do the same thing, if not similar things in Lightroom, but there is a fundamental difference in usage and workflow of vibrance and saturation. So let's just start with the easy stuff first, saturation. Saturation is easy to understand. It controls the intensity of colors in the entire image with equal effect. The color of every single pixel is gonna have their color boosted or muted, no questions asked. Slide it to the right to increase the intensity, slide it to the left to decrease the intensity. Easy peasy, easy to understand. Because Lightroom has redundant functions that can be used for the, pretty much the same action, vibrance can be used to make colors of your image pop without clipping. And that's because vibrance is a smart tool, which increases the intensity of more muted colors, leaving saturated colors alone. But more importantly, vibrance prevents, prevents skin tones from becoming overly saturated and unnatural. When using Vibrance, Lightroom is actually analyzing your image and seeing which part of that image has the most amount of saturation while also determining if there are any skin tones. Then it protects those parts from being oversaturated while you increase the saturation slider. This means the overall saturation effect is subtler and a lot more refined when using Vibrance. Lightroom does its best to try and evenly distribute the saturation rather than create some crazy colored image. Inversely, if you are looking to mute or bring down the saturation, adding negative vibrance will cause the more saturated portions to desaturate first, with the rest of the colors following shortly after that. This is a massive deal for workflow, and that's why the vibrant slider is always used first before the saturation slider. It's way more powerful and leads to far more natural looking images. So our suggested workflow for vibrance and saturation should be use your vibrance first. We grab our vibrant slider first and we just move it to the right and get just the right of color that we want. And as you can see, we're not really affecting the skin tones of our musicians here. Then you can take your saturation slider if it's needed and you can boost it up or you could drop the saturation a little bit. A little bit. And that's the important thing to remember when you're managing color in Lightroom. Two things. Always, you can always use more than one slider or more than one control to get the color that you want. And two, it should be subtle, small changes. You add all these small changes together and you'll get the color that you want in your photograph. So with this one, let's say, let's boost the saturation up a little bit. I like the color of the skin. I like the color of the leaves, but I think I have a little too much orange and yellow here. Just go to your color mixer, HSL, and we can grab the orange, and we can grab the yellow in saturation, bring it down just a little bit, and give it just a little subtler color, as you can see here, before, before, and after, before, and after. So the secret is, just like I said, Use your, satur your, use your vibrance first, then follow up with saturation, and then look at your other tools to bring the colors more in line, whether it's your color mixer, point color, 
tone curve. You have plenty of tools that you can use. And those are actually subjects for videos in the future that I'll be bringing to you. If anybody has any questions about this, please feel free to drop me an email and I'll be glad to help you. I'll talk to you all soon.